What's up? I'm AJ, and welcome back to Gen Z Garage. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a compression test on your engine. Last video, we went and we retrieved the engine hoist from the storage unit. Look at it. It's like a shark waiting for its next victim. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Anyways, before we begin, let's talk about the trivia question from last video. The trivia item from our last video was the handle portion of a windshield gasket removal tool. No one got it this week, which is my fault for picking something that wasn't even complete. This tool was a two-piece unit that's used to carefully cut the window urethane seal on older windshields. It will generally have a blade attached to the very end. From the same mounting point, it will also have a remote handle attached by a short metal braided cable that provides direct leverage on the tool to pull the cutting arm around the windshield circumference. Thank you for playing, and hopefully you'll all get the next trivia question at the end of this video. Alright, even though I plan to rebuild the engine, I want to do a compression test on it to check the condition of the engine and to see whether or not I need to do a full rebuild or just a top end rebuild. There are two types of tools that can be used to check the compression of the engine. One that gets screwed into the spark plug hole and one that's held against it. While the Fiero drives pretty well and the engine sounds strong, we noticed a prolonged amount of steam coming from the exhaust, even after the car has completely warmed up. It doesn't feel down on power, but like with anything else, it's not worth putting good money after bad if the engine isn't in good shape. The compression test will allow us to get a glimpse of the engine's health without having to completely pull the motor. Of course, I intend to pull the motor anyway, but this at least gives me an idea of the work I have in store for me. I start by removing the deck lid vents from both sides. This will allow me to gain easier access to the spark plug holes and help me resist le leaning on them while I work on the engine. Next, I disconnect the air intake tube and move it off to the side and out of the way. I'll then remove the air cleaner lid, which is held in place with two 13mm bolts. In some cars, I've seen people replace these with wing nuts, which is likely what I'll do when I put my car back together. Before we remove the air cleaner, we have to disconnect the manifold air pressure sensor, which is held in place with a clip. Remove the clip by carefully prying up with a screwdriver, and move the sensor out and off to the side. Finally, the vacuum line going to the Thermac will have to be disconnected. It is held in place by two metal prongs and gives a twang when pulled free. Whoa, that was a weird noise. Next, in order to prevent the car from starting or fuel from flowing through the injector, we will disconnect both the ignition coil and the fuel injector. We'll start with the coil, which in this car is located off to the rear side of the motor directly underneath the fuel filter. Disconnect both ignition wires from the coil and set them off to the side. Next, we disconnect the injector plug at the top by pinching the two ends and pulling straight up. When disconnected, move the plug off to the side. Next, you would remove each spark plug wire and remove each spark plug one at a time as you test each cylinder. In this case, we intend to completely pull the motor, so I'll be removing all the spark plug wires and get them out of the way. The plug wires are wrapped along the edge of the valve cover and held in place with spark plug wire looms. These can be removed by popping the little clip at the top and removing the bracket that holds them in place. If the ends are broken off, save them so you don't lose them. The plug wires and distributor cap all look brand new, so I'm going to be careful when removing them as I will likely reuse them when I get the engine back together. To begin testing, we'll start with the cylinder furthest to the left side of the car, which is the driver's side. Technically, this is cylinder number four and counts down to number one on the passenger side, but I'm labeling it as number one for convenience sake. For this engine, which is the Iron Duke, I'm using a 5 8 spark plug socket to remove the plugs. 
It takes a little bit to get the right angle, but the plugs come out without too much resistance. Be careful not to push down too hard at an angle or you can potentially break the porcelain. Once the plug is removed, I move it to the work table to inspect at a later time. I then take my compression gauge and I lightly put some anti-seize on the threads to help it seal during the test. I screw in the end of the flexible gauge hose until it's hand tight. While the gauge technically maintains the highest pressure recorded until you push the release valve, my dad is going to help by cranking the engine over at least four times. Watch as the gauge builds pressure with each crank. One hundred sixty psi. That is a fantastic number. I may not even need to touch this engine. This is really exciting, especially for my checking account. If the next cylinder is at one sixty two, I'll be in good shape. We'll repeat the process for the next cylinder, but I'm having a hard time reaching. How many of you guys have had to stand in the trunk to work on your car? I think this is almost a rite of passage for Fiero owners. Let's get the gauge in there and see what we've got. Wait, what? 90 PSI. After rechecking, we ended up with 60 PSI. Oh well. We repeat for the next cylinder. 120 PSI. Not horrible. And finally, for the last cylinder, 70 to 80. Well, we'll be pulling this motor. So the results are in, and number one is carrying the entire team. Number one and three are the only good ones, or for in three's case, semi-good ones. And two and four are not doing so well. We're gonna have to rebuild the engine, um, and that's probably gonna be in a few videos from now, I'm guessing, because we have to take the engine out first, and we're probably gonna make a video about that. But before we go, I'd like you to tell me what you think this is. And I'm sure all of you are going to get this, or at least a lot of you. And anyway, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like before you go. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the, new, in the next video. Seriously, what is with this music?